welcome to this afternoon session um, titled Fem Biobus. Um, yesterday evening we launched Fem Biobus 2 and you will see that in our program we have the winner of Fem Biobus 1 who will be giving a talk. Before she um, addresses us and, and shares some of her learnings, um, in, in prep for this work, um, for this presentation, I started reading up on what's, what's happening in the women entrepreneurship space. Is it advancing? Has it stagnated, et cetera? And I came across some very interesting insights. I mean, one of them was a study that was conducted in Boston as well as St. Louis in the US. Um, it was a, a study that was looking at gender inclusion um, activities and entrepreneurship. And very interesting, one realizes the impact that women-owned enterprises have in the economy of the US. So in this specific study, they indicate that in 2017, women entrepreneur, women-led um, enterprises contributed about three trillion US dollars to the US economy, which in 2017, their national GDP was about 19 trillion dollars. So this is quite significant um, for women-led companies. But also as they looked at that level of impact, what became apparent was that women-owned um, enterprises lag behind in terms of scaling up. So these companies are, are set up and they remain at that stage. And they started looking at what are the factors that lead to this um, lack of growth. And so, you know, as we engage today, and I'd like our panel members to also reflect on this in terms of, you know, if this is seen in the US, is this what you're also seeing in the respective countries that you represent? But also if we could just share some learnings in terms of how we can grow and scale women-led enterprises. So without taking too much time, I'm now going to ask Prof. Gulebohile Mutawu, who is heading up a company called Global Health Biotech to come and address us, thank you. And we can um, project the presentation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as uh, the program director already indicated, my name is Kule Bukhila. I'm just going to, in the next 10 minutes, going to talk about my experience being the FIMBA, in the FIMBIO program and how I become, how one can become an entrepreneur from the scientific background. The outline of my talk is just going to go straight to the point. Uh, what are the key ingredients of entrepreneur? Um, why? Why must we? Why must it be linked? Can I take this? Maybe it's just because I like to walk. Yes, I think so. <clears throat> I will just talk about what are the key ingredients of entrepreneur. Are you born to be an entrepreneur, or do you have to go and study to be an entrepreneur? And what are the challenges? And why it is important? And where must this then so animal called entrepreneurship be linked? And in terms of the proposal linked to the business plan, what I have learned, and the use of growth will proposal in grant writing for 360. This is some of the things that I have learned, which I wouldn't have learned it when I was in the university, and even if I'm a professor, or other possibility of funding, except, you know, NRF, that we usually go for funding, NRF and MRC, in terms of pitching, and just a quick a case study of my company. The, one of the most key, or I usually say the key ingredients of entrepreneurship, you must have the purpose why you want to do it. You must have the passion. You can't do something if you don't have a passion for that. I'm telling you. You cannot go and buy a passion from Edgar's or Woolworths. You must have it. You must persevere. I was talking to one lady that you will pitch as an entrepreneur. You must keep on pitching and pitching until your name becomes pitch. You must be able to perform. Performance is also extremely important because a lot of the people, they just want to be an entrepreneur and they don't understand that it's hard work. What are the challenges? The reason why I did that, it was coming from the university. I'm a professor. I'll take that head and put another head. We are training PhD students. They are graduated. And what happened after that? They end up loitering on the street, not looking for a job. And it was nice for them when they graduate, wearing their red gown, working on the stage. One of the reasons why I decided to become an entrepreneur from being uh, academic was to make sure that how I train my PhD student, uh, how they must link they, are, they have to start thinking out of the box with, and I, they must be able to go, not to be able to go and look for a job, but they must be able to create a job from their research and they must be able to identify a gap 
um, from the research and then the market segment, which is extremely important. Uh, the purpose for me for entrepreneurship was just jobs are scared and, and, and unemployment is very high, especially for the people who are co co uh, graduated. And then with them, training them to be entrepreneur, they'll be able to create job for themselves, which is creation of job opportunity. And then you, and, and my, in my view, I always say, I must train my postgraduate students in a manner that they can create a job for themselves, not to go and look for a job, and, not, and to be a, not to be a job seeker, but they must also be their own boss. And I actually want to train them to be better than me. I'm not the type of a professor where I'm so scared that the students will be better. I want them to be better than me. The whole issue of uh, entrepreneurial, I mentioned it yesterday, that what is lacking here, we have to start incorporating this in curriculum. Strictly from, not even from metric, maybe from primary. We have to start talking about entrepreneuring from primary, undergraduate. We have to incorporate that in the subject. We have to incorporate that in the programs that we are all doing. And then again in research method, and it must be a continuous thing, not something that at the postgraduate level, then we start talking about it like now. I'm going to share this with, for those people who's got PhD here. They can tell me there's, there's completely something wrong with this. When you go to the university, they will say to you, go and write a proposal. And then you're gonna ask them, can you please give me a template for the proposal? They'll give, give you something like this. If you look at this uh, framework for research proposal, this thing, if you look at this, I call it this thing, because it is a thing. There's no way that with this kind of a proposal, we are going to train an uh, entrepreneur. And I can tell you, all the university, the big five, University of Technology, we use this template. And, and I'm definitely sure even Africa, the African university, when you go write a proposal, they will want this uh, background, research problem, hypothesis, material, design, population. That, I mean, dude, there is no way that after this you'll be able to create your job. Now, I decided to have my own university one day, and then I'll show you how my research proposal is going to look like. First of all, that research proposal is not gonna be called research proposal. I'll rather call it framework for research innovative proposal, so that you know very well that you are going to create something that is very innovative. And when you look at this, the my research problem, in the research problem or questionnaire, you must be able to indicate what you want to address, what is the technology underpinning the product, what is the purpose? What is the service? How is the technology different from the one that is currently you are using? What is the product services? What is also important, you must be able to tell me the market and the industry analysis, the custom position, the customer portfolio. Then you can come with your materials and method. Then you must be able to tell me who are your competitors. You need to know that. And then the time frame, then you can talk about the financial projection. I didn't, but I didn't know this until I become the winner of the FIMBAYO, where I was able to attend the boot camp and be able to come and learn about this. In the, I can tell you, I can challenge, we've got professors here, I'm definitely sure, and doctors from the university. They're not even using this kind of a format in terms of that. But in order for us to be able to train the entrepreneur that we're talking about, we need to start looking at this. On the, on the, on the other hand, when we, the, one of the things that I've also learned, the progress report, when you've got a student, you usually say, tell me about the progress report. The students will tell you, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. But if we can start adding this so-called growth wheel, I'm not gonna go in details about the, the purpose of growth wheel in proposal or the 360 degree. You can Google it, it's always there. This is the best way to assess your progress. Even you on your own, even you with your own company, you can use the growth wheel. As an entrepreneur, you must be able to use this. It is there and to see whether are you going somewhere or you're not going somewhere. One of the things that we don't know the differences between when you stand and you're going to present your you are, you are findings and the pitch. We end up realizing that if you become, if you want to be an entrepreneur, which one of the things that I have learned, I was not aware of it, was the pitching. That there are different kinds of pitches. We've got the so-called elevator pitch, and then we've also got the so-called, um, what is the other one? The elevator pitch, and then the, the, the other one is, is, is a called uh, the, the venture pitch. Now you can see the differences between the two. The elevator pitch, you must be able to tell me what you're doing in the lift. That's why they call it elevator. 30 seconds. What is your name? What are you doing? If you want to invest, you must be able. Hence, passion is extremely important. 
And then the venture pitch is the one that we are doing it today, the one for five minutes. So those are the kind of things that we do. And the elevator pitch is one of the things that most of the time you use it when you meet a person and ask you, what are you really doing? And it's a storytelling. And within 30 seconds, you must be able to tell the person what you are doing. If you cannot tell the person what you are doing within 30 seconds, then there's a problem and you want money, then you're going to have a problem. Quick question just to, to take you through. After studying, decided to be an entrepreneur, taking my research, and to, from my research, I decided that th I'm going to develop a product, a product that I know who are my competitor, and I know how I'm going to beat my competitor. I develop a product from medicinal plants, and is an ointment in Africa sweeter. That ointment is the one that is used by a lot of people. We, for the workout, you have to apply it before you go to Vision Active. And <coughs> the guys, uh, soccer, they can also use it for the runners. And and what it does, it's actually a preventative measure. You actually apply it before you go to gym and after, gy after, after, after coming from the gym. Why? It, it, it differs from the Voltaren, which you all know. You only apply Voltaren when you have hurt yourself. With the Africa Suta, you don't have to go and hurt yourself. Apply it before you're hitting yourself. And this is what makes man to stand up. And on the other hand, it can build up cartilage. I have done the studies. As a scientist, it's easier when you talk to the people and say, this can do this, you can justify that based on your article. On the other hand, I decided to develop another product where it can actually be used by orthopedic surgeon for bone and cartilage regeneration. This is one of the things that is actually going to help the doctors when you do, usually most of the time when they do a surgery, they always have to do the allocraft or the autocraft. You know, they have to take a patch of the skin somewhere else to somewhere else and then that becomes a problem. And with this one, it's straight to the point. It's just on the life lies that the orthopedic guys, they can just use it and inject it and there's no any other second operation. And, 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 and one of the things that is extremely important, you cannot do these things on your own, even if you can like it or not. These things, this work, this company wouldn't have happened without the two partnerships that I've got here. These are my PhD students who also become part and parcel of global health. They don't have to go and look for a job when they graduate in December. And I thank you. Thank you. Wow, this, this was a very well put together presentation, loaded with lots of insights, but again, delivered in very short time, efficient. So we can definitely see that you benefited from the pitching training that you had. Well delivered. Thank you very much. You mentioned a number of very key aspects in terms of the success of business. And as we engage with the panel, I'd, I'd like to pose these to you so that you can also share um, on these. You mentioned, and, and this is something that as South Africans we've seen when you look at the likes of MIT, et cetera, where you have professors like yourself, but who are involved in business. Um, so for us, it's, it's good to see that happening in the country and that there's programs that are enabling this, but also there are universities that are encouraging and supporting this. So um, that, that, that is a very interesting um, merge of, of capabilities. You mentioned something in, in your new template of proposals. You mentioned financial projections, and a lot of us scientists don't have a finance background. You know, so maybe if you can talk about what's the difference between a project budget and financial pro projections um, you know, for your product. But also very important, um, and this is something that we struggle with as scientists, I see that you've got two products. One was a product that probably had limited regulatory barriers, so you're managing to get that into the market quicker. And while you're developing something that is, you know, tech intensive, will have regulatory, um, you know, aspects that you would need to, to, to encounter. And one of the things that we as scientists do, we don't appreciate the need for making sure that you put a minimally viable product into the market while you develop your really cutting edge innovation, because at the end of the day, you will need to generate sales that sustain the business while you develop your other product, um, you know, that's in the pipeline. So I'd just like to talk for you to share what, what informed um, that decision of having these two products that seem very different, but I think I, I have the same um, basis in terms of the technology. Um, as you reflect on those, I'd like to also introduce our panel members. So we have Ms. Irene Okem from AWIF, and AWIF um, is the African Women Innovation and Entrepreneurship Forum. Welcome, 
and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself and then also tell us what your organization does. We also have Mr. Patrick Shatamuka from We Create, and We Create is the Women Entrepreneurial Center of Resources, Education, Access, and Training for Economic Empowerment, and it's based in Zambia. And also similarly, when we hand over, please just tell us about your organization and what it is that we do. And then lastly, we have Mr. Petra Sabina from FNB Botswana. And I'm sure a number of you are wondering why do we have FNB sitting here, but a number of our banks, um, I think across the region, have appreciated the, the impact that technology innovation can have. And I see a number of them coming on board and supporting incubators, supporting companies, etc. So Petrus, we also look forward to you sharing more around what um, FNB does in this space. So I'm first going to hand over to Ms. Irene to introduce herself and the organization. Yeah, th thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so I am the Chief Executive Officer of the Africa Women Innovation and Entrepreneurship Forum. And um, we are a Pan-African um, uh, Women's Economic Empowerment Organization. And um, what do we do? We drive um, the economic inclusion, advancement, representation, and um, develop uh, emp economic empowerment of women. We do this uh, via uh, entrepreneurship uh, support and um, development because um, we believe in uh, entrepreneurship. And um, how do we do this? Um, we have uh, identified um, the peculiar barriers, challenges that women uh, encounter, you know, in comparison to men. Um, capacity building and um, access to finance, access to market. Um, access to networks and information and um, mentorship and the rest of them. So we work across them um, trying to, um, across these issues and challenges. We do this, we have programs that are targeted at uh, finding solutions for women um, to help them, um, you know, uh, grow their potential, maximize their potentials as entrepreneurs. We also um, work to show, you know, to showcase the role, you know, to highlight the role that women uh, play in the economic development of Africa, which in most cases uh, is not really um, appreciated. So we also do that. We, show, we showcase um, success stories. We use uh, these uh, highly successful uh, women entrepreneurs across the continent as role models, as, um, inspira uh, as inspiration for the young emerging women entrepreneurs and also the aspiring ones. So our programs uh, that um, work across the issues I, I have mentioned go from, um, for capacity building, we have accelerator programs. Yesterday, the uh, panel that uh, spoke on um, financing, they, uh, they mentioned the fact that in most cases, um, people who finance businesses say they don't have um, fine businesses to, uh, to, to fund. When you talk about women, it's even more, um, you know, pr the problem is even more present. So we have uh, capacity building uh, uh, initiatives, accelerator programs, uh, training workshops, and the rest of them. And uh, um, we also, we are a platform, a membership uh, networking platform that uh, we are, every woman entrepreneur in Africa can register to become a member. You tap into our network and the things that uh, we provide. To showcase uh, success stories, we have uh, last year launched an AWIF Awards uh, in different categories where we celebrate and recognize um, success stories. Then uh, the activities that we uh, carry during the year uh, culminate in, um, in an annual international uh, multi-stakeholder and very, um, uh, you know, high level, uh, I would call it, um, event, a conference and uh, exhibition 
we have held this um, four years running now. This is the fourth year, and we'll have it on the 8th and 9th of uh, November in Cape Town. It's a platform that brings together the whole uh, entrepreneurship uh, ecosystem. We start with uh, government policymakers who need to mainstream um, gender equality and, uh, and all that. We go to the corporates, we go to the whole uh, um, um, uh, players in the ecosystem, finan financial um, uh, people who provide finance, people who provide markets, the corporates, because we also want the women to access their um, um, supply chains. Then, um, so we have this conference and um, there we discuss and we debate the issues, the challenges. We see who is uh, doing what in the ecosystem, how do we tap into what they are doing, how do we make women benefit from what is happening, what are the trends in entrepreneurship, and what are the uh, learnings to be done. AWIF is also a platform for, um, to encourage intra-Africa uh, uh, collaborations and businesses and partnerships. And uh, from the activities that we have run and so far, and from the businesses, uh, the uh, conferences uh, that we, uh, we have held, we have seen such uh, collaborations uh, being born, partnerships, there are testimonies, people are collaborating and, um, and things are being done. This year also we, have, um, we are launching um, a breakfast event as to support our networking and connection and collaboration efforts. We are going to start uh, with Botswana on the 29th of March to hold this um, networking uh, breakfast event. And then uh, we have to you know, do it across um, all the African countries. Yeah, so um, to the <laughs> I think I can, uh, yes, I can say some more things uh, later on. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Shatam Patrick. Um, coming from We Create, as introduced. We Create Zambia. We Create Zambia is a center which was established uh, three years ago. This was an initiative by the Obama government to empower women and uh, the Caterpillar Foundation, as well as uh, AWEP. Uh, it was first established for those people who could say low-class people, and the first center was established and uh, located in Chawama. It's one of the suburbs in Zambia, but over time, it has actually attracted attention of even the high-class people. We use a very simple model to train the people. We use what we call a business model to train the people, which talks about what is your very preposition, who is your target market, what is your revenue model like. And we also emphasize on building a team. And our programs are mentor-focused because we incubate entrepreneurs from different sectors of the economy. So we realize that we need to have mentors who have the expertise in these areas to mentor these people. What are some of the successes which we create as done since it was established? Uh, we've trained oh, m about 3,700 have accessed our services. Then about 2,700 plus employment has been created and about 870 businesses have been uh, established. If anything, I would actually talk about a reality. One of the ladies who passed through our We Create programming is actually here. It's not We Create who brought her here, but it is because of the vigorous and rigorous training she underwent that she became very aggressive in trying to understand the networking and partnering with other people. So the programs we offer at We Create, there's what we call Build a Business. This actually tries to provoke the mindset of each and every entrepreneur who says they want to be an entrepreneur. Because what we have discovered in our journey is that some people just say, I want to be an entrepreneur, maybe just because they have a challenge. But this program is, uh, entails an entrepreneur to not look at only because I want to do something, but it tells this person to identify what is the challenge in the market how do you solve that challenge? 
So that is basically what we usually do. And the essence also for the We Create program is to move the informal sector to the formal sector. And during our programming, we've partnered with government institutions. For instance, we're talking about PACRA. This is a, a government agency which registers institutions. So every time when we have programs, we bring in these other institutions. So basically, that is what I can say about uh, We Create. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Petro Sabine, as already introduced. I'm from FNB Botswana, where I work as the head of business banking. Basically, my role is simple, is to avail funding to small and medium enterprises. Uh, I think what I can say about FNB is that for the longest in FNB Botswana, we've been considered by the market as pro-corporate, not so playing a pivotal role in terms of SME financing. People have come to us and accuse us of lack of uh, recognition that they've banked with us for many years, and yet they, whenever they come for us, either for expansion loans, we're never really forthcoming in terms of assistance. But at the same time, as a bank, we need to say we are not in touch with other stakeholders in the market in terms of what is happening, where the pipelines of these ideas. So after introspecting as a bank, what we decided is to, we decided to actually put as part of our strategic pillar, one of the pillars would be a partnership where we went to the market and identified some of the key partners. One of those partners is actually Botswana Innovation Hub where a lot of technology ideas are actually happening there. It's important that as a bank, we thought it would be important for us to be closer to the initial establishment of this idea so that we can actually be a part of it right from the onset so that when they come to a proposal level, uh, at least we are aware of what's happening. I must say that we are currently uh, the partnership with Botswana Innovation Hub is currently uh, promising. We've also partnered with the Gender Affairs Ministry and then under the Ministry of uh, uh, and one of the ministries in Botswana, which support women in business. So basically, these are just ordinary women from back from different backgrounds where they are given grants. As a bank, we avail ourselves to take them through financial literacy in terms of how they can actually package what products are available for them. And the other thing that we have actually done was also to partner with one of the the funding institutions in Botswana, we have an institution called Cid Citizen Entrepreneurial Development Agency, which is actually a development institution arm of the government. So through a risk sharing model, CIDA is able, we're able to take a risk and share the risk with CIDA. So whenever we find one of the, any of the, 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 the innovative ideas, we can actually pitch it to CIDA to really say, guys, this is a startup. We don't predominantly play in that space. Can you kindly share the risk with us? And oftentimes they've really been forthcoming. We're recently at, uh, about to sign one of the guarantee facilities with one of the financial institutions with the French government where they've given us around 10 million euros just to uh, really counter some of the risks that we face in the startups. I think that should actually help us roll over 364 million to all the startups and people we've identified tourism as well as the food and processing industries where we can actually participate. Uh, so I must say and the one other thing that we have also done, we've also come up with another system that are more recognitive of, uh, that recognize the loyalty of the customers. We have come and built up a system in the bank that is a behavioral scoring model. So it has got no women intervention. Based on your banking behavior, you, actually, you can actually uh, qualify for unsecured loaning of up to about 500,000, which is actually good. But one thing I need to mention is that FNB in Botswana has actually moved uh, in the past uh, to, uh, 15 years from number four in the market to number one in the market, absolutely out of technology. So we're technology driven. And what we've done internally is that we've got an innovators association with Amen Club in the, in the bank, where we encourage even the bank employees to really think outside the box, come up with the innovative ideas. And they normally, there's normally b very, very, very handsome um, uh, recognition awards that we give to them. I think last uh, we've got one of the one of the the star 174 in Botswana, which actually gives access to. It's actually a pay. We can actually pay uh, so many services, uh, buy electricity, do other things, uh, DSTV, water, and so forth. It was actually innovation by one of the employees, and they actually four teams came together, four people came together, innovated, and they won themselves 1.5 million out of that. So. I must say, you know, I mean, FNB, we know technology has taken us there. We are technology-driven company, so we need to support women in business and any other viable idea that comes from the technology space. That's who we are. Thank you very much. I'm just going to ask you some questions, and then from there we'll give um, the floor an opportunity to ask. 
Prof Montaoui, you spoke about being in academia and um, being in business. How do you manage those um, two roles? But also, um, can you just educate us on the difference between a financial projection and a budget for a business? And then lastly, if you can speak to the two product pipelines, how, how did that come about? Okay, let me first start with the differences between a budget and a financial projection. And most of the time, when you write a proposal, you will write a budget. A budget is what you are going to need in order for you to run that project or to run that whatever you are doing. And then the financial projection, now they have given you a budget. Now you have to make sure that will you be able to sell, and then this is your financial projection to make sure that the budget that they have given it to you, if it was 200,000, were you able to make a profit? That's why the financial projection is extremely important. That's why it is important that when we do the budget for the project, if it's 500,000, you must make sure that your financial projection must at least be more than 500,000 so that it can cover the budget that you have already used. Hence, financial projection is extremely important. And I know that uh, scientists, we are not finances, but uh, there are some crash courses that sometimes a person can start attending, you know, finance for non-finances or something like that. They usually offer those courses. I will actually encourage the scientists to start attending those courses. If you really want to become an entrepreneur so that you can, it's not going to make you an accountant, but you'll be able to understand it. The other question was on the balance, the balance between, the balances between the academia and, 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 and businesses. When they appointed me as the assistant dean of research at TUT, I was very clear that uh, um, I don't want my research to die. Then we were appointed on the 60-40, you know, like 60 is your research, 40 is your administration. Then you make sure that certain days uh, you become selfish, uh, that um, you, you, it's your research day. And one of the things that you must be very careful, even if you are a professor, don't allow your boss to send you to some of the stupid meetings, you know, because they are going to waste your time. Perhaps Monday is my research day, and I know that I've already planned something. And then somebody says, you have to attend a meeting for library or for operation or something of the toilet are leaking you. Uh, no, 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 I don't want to attend those kind of things. So you need to say no to your bosses and say, which one is for me, I can benefit, and which one is not. And this is one of the things that people end up attending things that they don't add value into their lives. The whole day they are on the meeting and they don't do anything, you know. So one has to be very careful because now I'm thinking like a business person. Even if I go to the meeting, I'll just tell them that by one o'clock I must be out. If whatever we are discussing after one, uh, and it's because of I've been trained, my supervisor was from America, an American guy, because I studied there. Ready was also very strict, like one o'clock, if you fin not finish at one o'clock, it's just going to work out. In terms of the two products that um, I've, I'm doing now, the first one, it was going to be easy for me to put that one on the market because to do the demo testing, the stability, the safety, and the efficacy for Allah Africa Sutha, microbial essay, it was easy. And then to do the anecdotal studies, it was also easy for that. But now, <clears throat> the one that I know that it can actually makes me a billionaire or one professor who's going to get that um, uh, uh, award or Nobel Prize is, the, is this one. Let me just show it. I think I've got it here. This one is going to take me forever. Oh, I don't know. I thought I've got it. The syringe one. <laughs> oh, it's here. Yeah, it's well. Yeah. This one is the Nobel Prize. This one. <laughs> this one. I've already got an investor who is interested in the syringe. But because of this one, they are, I've already done the in vitro. They will understand, you know. Now I must do the animal study. After the animal study, I must do the clinical trial. That was the reason why I decided to take the other one that can, I can have a cash flow so that it can help me to build up on this one. Fantastic. We look forward to celebrating your Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize. So, Ms. Ms. Irina Kem, I mean, one thing that we know in, in this area is that we, we sit with um, economies that don't create sufficient jobs. And it's known that um, technology companies, science technology companies, are the ones that have the potential to, to create scale and jobs. I mean, if you look at, um, you know, Google, you look at Facebook, you look at some of the companies in biotech, et cetera, they really are the high growth companies. So as AWIF, 
Um, are you operating in that space? Do you see women playing in that space? And what are some of the challenges there? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, as you can see from our name, is Africa Women Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Um, innovation drives entrepreneurship. And uh, if you are an entrepreneur, if you don't innovate, you, you can move on, you die, okay, as they say. So we believe so much in innovation, in technology, but AWIF is an organization that um, um, caters for every woman in every business sector. It's not only the technology sector, but we have a, spe a specific interest in the technology sector because uh, we see um, a lack of uh, enough women there. Start so this is why um, part of, uh, in, during our conference, you know, education is, and technology is usually a key uh, session tract uh, in, the, in the conference where we discuss uh, issues around that. How do you uh, bring more women into the technology space? Starting with STEM education, because it all starts with the uh, girl child, you know, that becomes the woman of tomorrow. So how do you educate, uh, how do you attract more girls into science education because uh, we are talking today here now we are in the biosciences. You have m less women in, uh, in, in sciences, you know, uh, generally, not only the bio, the bio uh, sciences. So our, we are also interested in getting more women into that space. Uh, we have some women across Africa already operating uh, in, the, uh, in technology um, entrepreneurship. We showcase, uh, we have a lot of them, we know them. We, showca we have showcased a couple of them. We are training also uh, focus on, on that technology space. So there are, they have specific barriers, you know, for women um, entering um, the innovation and the technology space. Some of them are cultural, some of them are structural, um, when you are talking about um, uh, barriers for women, also accessing finance and uh, markets. So, um, yeah, I, I hope I have answered your question. Yeah. Hope you can hear me, yes. Mr. Patrick, I mean, uh, I, I think we, we will at some point get to a point where entrepreneurship or women entrepreneurship, for me, it's important that it gets to a point where it's not about women being in that space, but it, it's an economic conversation. Because if we can create technologies, create jobs, and stimulate economies, it should not be a woman issue, but it should be about how do we stimulate growth of sectors and economies. Um, and one thing that is, 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 is appreciated also in the African region is that when you, one looks at a single country, it's not a big enough market. And so I want to understand what does we create do to ensure that you expose the companies that you support to a bigger market? There's a challenge around market access that our entrepreneurs have. Do you have any specific programs that address those issues? Uh, thank you very much. We usually have a lot of programs which help entrepreneurs. We run one of the biggest summit in Zambia, which is Zambia Entrepreneurship Summit, which brings in a lot of players in the market. For instance, I'm seated next to my colleague from FNB. At one particular time, we partnered with, with uh, FNB. And also, right now, as I'm speaking to you, the Citibank, which runs a City Micro Foundation, I mean, a City Micro Award, which is run by the City Foundation. We are in partnership where we'll be promoting entrepreneurs and the microfinancing institutions. So we have programs which make these women being exposed to the global market and to the global players, the investors, for instance. We usually have some uh, global investors who come to our office and they would need these women. So we profile the women and we create uh, a, a platform where these women can actually meet the, the, um, the, 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 the investors who can support them in finances, who can support them in market linkages. And sometimes the support is not only about money. We also see that there's also lack of support in terms of mentoring. So in our mentoring program, what we usually do is we have a pool of mentors from different sources and even across the group, like uh, universities, 
so that when this entrepreneur needs uh, coaching, mentoring, we link to them. Because what we have understood or we have seen as we create is that entrepreneurship is a bridge between that research in the lab and that product on the shelf. So we ensure that we harmonize these entrepreneurs so that they can have that opportunity to excel. Thank you. Thank you. And then my last question, and I'll hand over to the floor, is to Mr. Petrus. So I think women are doing well, and we see with Professor here that we're breaking the glass ceiling in corporates, in various institutions. We're now saying we want to break the glass wall. So we want to go outside, set up enterprises, and grow those enterprises. Other specific, specific skills, specific competencies that you as a funder of you know, high growth companies would, would recommend that you know, women ensure that they upskill themselves and so that they can grow their respective companies? Okay. Okay, thank you. I think what we've, first of all, what we've picked up in, the, in our market is that majority of the startups or business that are coming through, men are playing a lot more role in that space. They haven't been, I mean, women are only coming out right now, thanks to all the initiatives right across the industry that is trying to drive this. However, I think women, I think from my interaction with the women entrepreneurs, they do have strong characteristics which they, they had just, are just born with, which they can naturally bring into the business, for example. Uh, in business engagements, they are more honest, they, are, they, are o they open up, they discuss, they are not, sh they are not afraid to discuss their fears, they are able to discuss, they are not afraid to talk about their failures because there is little ego attached to either success or failure of their businesses. So it's easy to get down to the solution, whereas our male counterparts, usually we sugarcoat the problem until we get to a cancerous stage where we can have, uh, either we need to spend a lot more money to turn around or so forth and so on. But the other trait that I've picked up with women is that they're multitasking. I mean, they're able to juggle, to juggle many things at the same time. Their stress uh, uh, coping levels are very high. So, and the other thing that I've picked up with them is actually the commitment and the consistency. And uh, the instance whereby we'll call people to a program, such as training, I've seen more women really pitching up, committing to programs to starting and finishing than our male counterparts. If you give assignments, they actually go and execute, they come and research, they come and inquire. So I think from that end, I would say, uh, yes, women, I think if with this initiative, we can actually drive more women into this space. I think we can have more success stories. And the other thing that I've also picked is that they tend to be more, they take, they're more calculative in terms of risk taking. They don't make impulse decisions. I think, you, uh, you, you, they normally, they're usually very conservative in terms of their approach. They take a uh, realistic assessment of the potential risk for the future, whereas our male counterpart is really about, you know what, I, I want to do this, I want to go big, but when you start probing further, I think sometimes they don't provide the, the relevant answers that you expect from them. But the other thing that I've picked up is that they also take a long-term view in terms of their business initiatives. So they're most likely, with women, they're most likely to plow back the proceeds of the business back into the business for a steady, profitable growth, whereas on the male counterpart, sometimes we want quick, quick results, we want to see it happening quite often and most of the time we'll go either through equity or debt and with uh, and obviously exit sooner than we should. So obviously it's just a pity that you know for the longest we've kept women away from this uh, entrepreneurship space but I'm happy that now we've got intentional uh, direct programs that are really trying to accelerate women to close up this but what I need to emphasize is that we cannot keep men out of the equation. They are part of the solution because even when you walk out with a product that is market ready, you're still going to pitch to a man out of the party in, in the environment. So you definitely need to bring them in so much that it's not necessarily a competition against our male counterpart, but it's trying to level and make sure to optimize all available opportunities in the market. Uh, Mr. Kim, we, we've heard from you know, our male colleague and, and sharing frankly what are some of the strengths um, that women can bring to, to business. Um, but I'm sure there are also development areas. Um, I once read, um, I think it's a book called Lean In, and Cheryl was saying in that book um, that when women are negotiating salaries, um, they tend to get a lower you know, uh, 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 pay because they're not good with negotiating, and as much as they know their worth, they're not 
out what about it versus man. Um, and that can be something that limits us, right? Have you seen anything in this entrepreneurship space that you believe as women we should work on? Yes, absolutely. What you mentioned, um, um, thank you for bringing that up. Yes, as women entrepreneurs, we tend to be uh, less confident in our um, uh, abilities. In our, we tend to own our, uh, our successes less. More men are, are readier to claim even things that they didn't do, you know. <laughs> so, but as women, so uh, some of us, we call it the imposter symbol, um, 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 sy syndrome, you know, whereby, um, is it really me? Have I really done this? And so we are, we have, there is less confidence, you know. So what we do, uh, the platform that we put up, the networking, because uh, there is magic when you bring uh, women together, women entrepreneurs, you know, it's also to uh, empower, to inspire, to motivate uh, uh, one another, to uh, discuss uh, the peculiar barriers, the peculiar difficulties that we have. Yes, my colleague, uh, my fellow pa uh, panelist here, uh, Petrus has mentioned uh, about all the right skills that women uh, possess when it comes to accessing finance. But then my question is, why is it that women get less access to finance than men, even uh, when, when we come to the bank? Because that is the reality. In Africa, uh, as a whole, you have, um, globally, you have, um, it's, um, a, it's a, a, 10 to, a 10 to 7. Okay, so you have 30% of uh, men, uh, uh, women getting access to uh, finance uh, as against 70% uh, um, men. So we ask ourselves, why that? Okay, so there are, uh, as a pan-African organization, we don't work only in South Africa. We work in other African countries, and in some African countries, you actually have uh, cultural barriers to accessing finance, which goes with the fact that a wom women don't own um, landed property that you can use as collateral to uh, get uh, funding from the bank. They don't uh, own um, some, of, some women in some culture, African cultures cannot go to the bank alone without a man, even where they own the business, you know, to access finance. So we, are, um, we know about all these challenges, and um, it might not be the case uh, for South Africa, but in some African cultures, we have that. Um, but as women, we have that confidence uh, problem, and um, <laughs> yeah, the no, cultural and the structural barriers that yes. uh, no, Thank you very much. Us. I don't know if anyone wants to comment um, on this matter as we aim to wrap up. I just want to say something. Sometimes we women, we are our own worst enemies. We need to start supporting one another as women. Because I think this is one of the things that men actually, men always support each other, irrespective of what. But sometimes with women, we tend not to support one another. And that becomes a problem. Because even if you can see, I mean, I'm incubated at Innovation Hub. Let me just give you an example, for instance. And my mentor is a man. <laughs> I mean, it, it would be nice if I was being mentored by, especially in the business. I guess it's because of we don't have a lot of women who are entrepreneurs who can actually mentoring us or, you know, mentoring other women. So uh, this is one of the things that perhaps, um, you know, the Senbayo, this whole by FISA, the film, is one of the things that they also need to start looking at, you know, in terms of having female uh, uh, mentors so that all these stu uh, students that they're going to go through with this program, they must be mentored that they can always go back to them. Like, for instance, even if I was a winner, it would be nice that they must always be having kind of a feedback, how am I doing? Not like you've won, it's okay, bye-bye. You know, you want to be still asking them to be, keep on having that, that kind of a communication with them because these are the people that have actually um, contributed a lot to your business. So they must be able to know what is really happening. And this is one of the suggestions that I can, because I saw that you are signing the, the second one. Yes, so that is one of the things that they can actually look at. Yes, we can take two, um, your comment and then the two gentlemen and then we will wrap up. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on what you said about uh, women not supporting um, um, one another. I think that is more um, conventional saying that than actual uh, reality because as a, as a women's organization, uh, I said before that we showcase success stories. We use women uh, as role models, and we use them as mentors. And most, what I find, what I, I, ha I have on ground is 
very many women entrepreneurs who have achieved success very ready to help and support and give a hand uh, to the younger ones you know so i'm i'm personally on a personal basis all the breaks that i have gotten in my life were given to me by women and this is one of the reasons why i um, I, I chose this um, um what i'm doing and why i'm passionate about that because i believe in women and um so i haven't seen many women fighting themselves. I have seen many women actually wanting to uh, help other women. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. One thing I can do is that we create, what we usually do is we remove the gender barrier there. We develop an, a mind of an entrepreneur. What an entrepreneur faces, a man or a woman, you just have to face it because the environment is not going to favor any sex. The people who buy the product you make are either male, female, or children. So we, in our programming, we ensure that we develop the mindset of going into a market like a lion to go and fight. So basically, that's what we usually do at uh, We Create. And we also encourage them to form teams. You know, there's a saying which says, nothing of greatness succeeds without a team. So we encourage them to formulate teams so that at the end of the day, they don't speak one. They speak as a group, so they give they have that strength. So basically, it's removing that mind to say that I'm a woman. You just say, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm in business. Basically, that's the spirit we, we implant in these women we work with. And you can see I'm a gentleman. Sometimes I'll be among all the women through almost all the times. So for me, they are just coming out like entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. I think, uh, obviously, you are right that uh, commercial banks would not necessarily take uh, unsecured, unsecured engagement with uh, entrepreneurs. This is uh, one of the uh, areas that has actually restrained access to financing. But I think that's why we have actually, in Botswana, then considered other partners like CEDA, uh, where they can actually go into risk sharing model with us, which it has really helped. The other reason why maybe applications, not necessarily women, uh, female, applications or male applications that fail is because of the poor, poorly constructed business plans. But what we have done, we've partnered with your local enterprise authority, which is a mentor, mentoring and training division. Uh, they assist people with business plan completion and market access. They've got all our requir application requirements. They're able to really help customers complete applications to, for the bank in the right specific. We've also partnered with another, uh, another mentoring institution called Tokafala, which is an initiative of the Psoana. Uh, DBS and Anglo-American, where they also have got their our 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 requirements, and we have actually opened up this dialogue whereby they are willing, they are able to come into the bank, discuss during the the planning stage whether the business plan is actually going the direction we want, and we've seen improved success in that area. So I think yes, we we because we are trying to close the gap which has been opening up for quite a long time. It will be a uh, some time before we can close, but I must say. Uh, the progress on the market, the progress that we're making with these partnerships are really bearing fruits. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to yeah, thank our panel for their time, but also more importantly is that you've come on board as partners of Femme Biobis, both all three, AUF, Recreate, and the Botswana Innovation Hub has come on board as partners for Femme Biobis too. So we look forward to working with you and thank you for sharing your precious time with us. I see Petrus has a comment he would like to make. Okay, I think my last comment is that I think uh, the reason why I've actually, I think when I joined the commercial bank, I then said, guys, we need to bridge a gap between us and this private industry, private sectors. But it's not so, it's not a common thing to see in the market where commercial banks are brought into discussions like this. I just want to encourage Vincent Bayer to really say, in the next forum like this, make sure that you bring commercial banks because they're left out, but I think at one point or the other, you're gonna need commercial banks because the funding that's available to support these startups is only little and we can only support quite a few number of uh, innovative ideas that are coming out, whereas some go un are frustrated. So we need to make sure that right from the inception stage where the research work starting, let's bring the, uh, uh, let's partner with the commercial bank so that they are aware of these ideas, what's happening, they can ask questions at the right stage, so much that when you now prepare a proposal to go to the banks, they fully understand the concept, they know the market value of those propositions. I think in that way, then banks can actually play their space because 
as space, as banks, we do commercial, I mean, asset transformation. I take John's money, I give it to Betty, but Betty should be able to bring it back. And so I need to be able to really say any business plan that I back up, I think the market, the model has to be really convincing. Otherwise, the banks will not really play a space, uh, a role in that space. No, thank you. And, and we definitely appreciate that uh, recommendation and we will bring it on board. Uh, see the Biofisa team is nodding. Thank you very much, and thanks to our panel members.